So you are at a Fortune 500 company, and I I want to know like when it comes to you know doing your testing and your and your learning, do you get a lot of say in what you're testing, or is it kind of like assigned to you? Like how much freedom and flexibility do you get to like choose your projects? So it depends. Like uh, I can speak about my uh, org, or maybe like in general, in any Fortune 500 companies, uh, there might be a proactive security team. and there might be a security team who just does task on the queue wherein you have some um, upcoming queue of uh, projects and you can work on it just like any consulting firm or you can just be proactive and pick out some stuff all by yourself and then uh, identify some issues and even for like red teaming there can be a case in which you have the flexibility to propose a new uh, red teaming on a specific uh, on a specific uh, path that you have and then you know work on that path nice and uh, so are you doing like are you working only on like your company's technology stack or are you doing like consulting stuff as well uh, right no, now I, i'm not doing consulting stuff so uh, for red teaming at fortune 500 it's uh, really different compared to doing it as a consultant so i i, I have worked as consultant in the past and i've done a lot of internal red teaming external red teaming so you do a lot of stuff like doing some phishing attacks or doing some social engineering attacks and even for like on site attacks uh, you are permitted to do a lot of things as a vendor but when you're working in a fortune 500 companies the process and everything is different so you are only allowed to work on a specific areas but more or less even if you learn anything that is outside it might not apply to the company it always depends on the technologies that they are using internally so one fortune 500 company might not even uh, be using a technology that you are trying to attack for example if there is a ad based attack and you are trying to simulate that attack in company a it might not even be vulnerable because they are not using uh, a specific service in ad so you know and anything that you learn outside it might not be transferable but the overall mindset the process of red teaming it it stays the same that you do some recon then you identify the high value target in in the particular org it might be external or internal and you find a path in which you can simulate the uh, external adversaries and if you say if the path is achievable or not so the overall process for red teaming is same but the technicalities in which we perform the actual red team it might differ from you know all all the fortune finders they have different you know network stack so it might differ okay so it kind of sounds like there's like a lot of like uh limitations on what you can do kind of like a lot of red tape right you don't get a lot of uh like you you got to you got to approach things like in a in a structured way compared to consulting is that is that accurate yeah yeah it, it's it's a lot structured compared to consulting in consulting you are just uh you know held by he, held back by your manager but if your manager says hey go ahead and you know hack everything you can do anything but it's not the same in fortune 500 since the stakes are you know pretty high so the approval process and everything uh, differs in fortune 500 and also that you yourself are aware that if anything goes wrong as a red teamer if one server goes down i know i am going to be blamed on twitter you know <laughs> it's going to yeah. be a big mess it's not going to be just org level uh, you know issue yeah. it would be a worldwide issue so that's the reason i i don't want to mess around yeah yeah worldwide issue that makes that makes a lot of sense yeah, <laughs> yeah. could you imagine it, like the cross strike thing you know like uh you you really mess up the whole world one guy push the wrong patch and it's like whoop you know world's biggest out so <laughs> yeah, yeah, I never thought of it that way as like working for a, a huge company like that, but that that absolutely makes sense. So, would you say since since you got to be more careful, you know, working for a Fortune 500 company uh compared to consulting, would you say mm-hmm. that the pace at which at which you work is slower than consulting? Mm, yeah, more or less it's slower. So, uh, whenever you're working as a vendor for any company, you have to do certain task let's say one pen test might be just for one week second week would be for reporting but since you are a employee you have lot of different things you you can check you know 
as a vendor you might not be able to go through the source code or you know different things but it's really about having a close tight relationship with the developer because if you don't understand what the developer is doing on his day to day job on a specific product you won't be able to secure it completely so even if for example if you go in any fortune 500 company and you assess the work done by vendors you might think hey i could have done a better job but if you are being really fair to yourself you can think hey vendor might have limited access he doesn't know the entire application since i'm a internal user i know how the app works in real life uh, internally so that's the difference when you are a um, security engineer you have to think from a different mindset you have to shift left wherein you have to go through the developer's mindset understand why they are not able to fix it and you know as a vendor you just send out the report and you say yeah fix it but as a security engineer you have to think hey how can i help them fix it sometimes there might be genuine issues that hey they are not able to turn on certain service because of policy a they can't use this tool now you have to find an alternative library which the org approves and so on so it's a tedious process but yeah in the long run you might more uh, you, you might create more impact than just a pen test as a security engineer that's nice to know yeah as a as a consultant penetration tester i definitely don't work with you know developers uh, you know closely you know i'll talk to uh, a developer maybe sometimes i don't even do that during a kickoff call and then maybe during a wrap up call but like you said yeah it's exactly like that I find a vulnerability i put it in a report and i'm like here fix this and then that's it you know and it's like it's like i don't really you know it's going i'm only going to write like you know a page worth of stuff on that one finding you know it's not like it's like super um in depth like I, i'll do my best to explain how to fix it and and you know what the problem is but at mm -hmm. the end of the day like it's just like a one page maybe two depending on what it is and then if they have any questions about it during a wrap up call um I'll dive deeper but typically they don't even ask for you know to go dive deeper on it mostly because I feel like you know if, I feel like if they don't ask any questions then I did a good job writing about it so that's always good to know but yeah like you said uh, I don't work I don't work with uh developers that, that closely so that's interesting though cuz I've never been into you know working as a office security engineer slash internal penetration tester like you're doing now what are the biggest pros from switching over from consulting to what you're doing now and what are some of the biggest cons yeah so for benefit I would I would like to say that you get to see what's behind the curtains you just don't see the play you actually know how it works who runs the play how are the approvals going on in development and how you can create a maximum impact so from career growth point of view like if you think from a cso's or uh, people who are in much technical position or much higher position a security engineer is able to create more impact than a pen tester so that is one pro i can think of i think and one con that i can think of is as a pen tester you can just go all in like you know do your offensive stuff as a security engineer even though you know you can hack into something and destroy something you are you have to ho hold back and it's not that you are holding back for example if you can just exploit a rce and you know gain some cookies do some stuff you know gain escalate it to into the cloud you know you can do it but as a security engineer i i, I won't be wasting my time on chaining the attack i would rather show the impact or maybe i can just uh, ask the developer to hey can can you show the uh, files on the server hey is there is this file on the server if yes then i can uh, go ahead and raise some issues and see how we can fix it rather than hey how i can exploit it and go deeper because that is pretty much irrelevant at this point because i am oh. working as a internal security engineer so i want to secure it rather than hey hey look i have found this particular attack so yeah interesting yeah uh I didn't really think about that how you uh would would be focusing less on exploiting uh finding so that's good to know that's really good information to know I didn't know that If you enjoyed this clip from the Hackers Cash podcast do me a favor hit the like button and subscribe for more hacking and cybersecurity content and if you want to watch the full episode you can get that by clicking here or if you want to watch the best video for you according to the YouTube algorithm you can get that right here See you in the next video